first of all you should remember that that uh, if a business wants to charge value added tax from uh, the other business or from the individual there must be registration so when a business is going to be registered for vat there are two options available one is the compulsory registration that is mandatory another is the voluntary registration examiner might ask you about the possible benefits and drawbacks of uh, applying for a voluntary uh, registration and sometimes for deregistration as well so if a business has uh, not compelled to join the vat registration then why business is needed to join so one advantage of joining it early before meeting the threshold is that uh, you can recover your input tax early because if you are not registered then you obviously cannot register early right similarly uh, if you are i mean able to register and you didn't register that there might be some chances of incurring the penalties so if you are using the voluntary option then it's good that you can avoid some penalties and as far as the disadvantage is concerned uh, that that is an administration burden that uh, uh, you are not supposed to pay vat or but you have voluntarily chooses to do so so it's an administrative burden and uh, you have to charge vat on your normal selling price it means the price will be increased and there are chances that people will not not buy from you if they are the final consumer it is always important that you can understand that uh, who is your customer if it is a business to business if your customer is also a business then it is very easy and if your business customer is a final consumer then you have to wait till you meet the registration threshold so registration threshold as far as is concerned so there are basically uh, two tests one is called the historical test another is called the future test first of all we'll see the historical test in the sequence and this says that the taxable supply what is taxable supply there are three types of supply one is the standard rated supply other is the zero rated supply and the third one is the exempt supply so standard rated and zero rated covers the taxable supply so if your last 12 month taxable supply or if it is a new business then earlier of this shorter of this exceed the registration threshold which is given in the tax sheet 85000 per annum or for the last 12 month so if suppose uh, on 1st december we see last 12 months taxable supply and it is more than 85000 then you need to register on the basis of historical test and if historical test is not satisfied then you look 30 days ahead that is called future test and see whether this threshold is meeting or not this is based on expectation of the taxable supply in the next 30 days whatever is the case suppose if you meet historical test then you have to notify hmrc and the notification period is 30 days common in both test the same you have to notify hmrc but as far as the registration is concerned in case of historical test your registration will start after the end of the 30th day that is from first day after 30 days pass that is from the next month so suppose if your threshold has been satisfied on 1st december then it means you have to register from 1st january and you can charge now output tax from your customers but as far as the future test is concerned if that has been satisfied on 1st december then you have to register immediately from 1st december don't wait for 30 days and start charging the value added tax from your consumers so this is basically the registration process now it is very obvious that uh, if you are not registered then you are not able to get your input tax back what you have paid on purchases but if you registered on 1st december there is a possibility that 
you can get some input back even if that has been incurred before the registration date and that is called pre-registration input back. We know that in income tax, we also have a concept of pre-registration expenditure. So we can claim pre-registration expenditure in case of income tax, in case of, uh, uh, and also the capital allowances. But here, if someone is not registered, if someone is registered and uh, like two months back, three months back, uh, goods or services have been acquired. Will that be possible to get your input tax back? Answer is yes. So pre-registration VAT can be recovered on the following. You can recover on goods, that is inventory and non-current assets, as well as services. But there are time limits. So that goods or assets must be acquired for business purpose, number one, in the last four years. And if you want to claim then goods are still in the hand at the date of registration. Means if the goods have been sold, then you're not able to get your VAT back. And in case of services, if supplied for business purpose, the limit is only six months. If it is more than six months, you cannot claim your registration input payment back. Similarly, there is deregistration schedule, deregistration threshold. So sometimes this is compulsory, and sometimes this is voluntary. So deregistration is compulsory when a business ceases to make taxable supply. For example, a business is uh, selling a tech standard rated goods. Now that has been converted into an exempt supply. So you don't need to continue. You have to deregister. Or if a business has been sold, then deregistration is compulsory. And this is the possibility that if you sold a business to someone, you can make a joint election to transfer your registration to a new owner. In that case, that new owner will assume all the rights and obligation against the registration. Similarly, voluntary deregistration is also possible. If you think that uh, you need to discontinue that registration, then you can do that. And when it is possible, if evidence suggests that Supplies in the next 12 months will not exceed the deregistration de threshold. This 83,000 is deregistration threshold. And registration cancelled immediately. As far as uh, notification is concerned, you have to notify HMRC within 30 days and registration cancelled from the date of cessation of business. Now, there are consequences of deregistration. And what are those consequences? If you have some inventory in hand or some non-current asset in hand, then you have to pay output tax on that. On those assets on which you have previously claimed input VAT. But if output VAT liability is 1,000 or less than 1,000, then there is no need to pay VAT on disposal. And if the registration is transferred, then there is no need to pay tax on sale of business. These are the main basic consequences, first of all. And one important concept is that, that uh, like, and always remember the terminology that there are inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax that sometimes the value will be given with tax that is called inclusive of tax and sometimes it is given without tax that is exclusive of tax. Now see one of the past paper question about deregistration. This is question number 15, Emilia. And uh, here we have a part question that is related with deregistration of VAT. So, this is the information about taxable turnover for VAT purpose. So, year ended 31st December 2021, 92,000 taxable turnover. In the next year, 65,000. In the next year, 79,000. You can see. This is less than 83,000 and this is also less than 79,000. 
Amelia expect that the taxable turnover will continue to increase gradually in the next few years. AS Trading makes wholly standard rated supplies. A standard rated supplies means you have to pay input tax, sorry, output tax, and you have to claim input tax. Wishes to apply for voluntary deregistration on 31st December 2022. Now, what is the requirement? Explain just a theoretical question. Why Amelia can apply to voluntary deregistration for VAT on 31st December? And from what date her VAT registration would be cancelled? An immediate consequence of her deregistration. So there are three points we can write. First point, why? Because she is expecting her taxable turnover for the for the next 12 months is less than 83,000. That is the answer of why. And registration will be cancelled from the date she applied for deregistration. And the consequence is that uh, she has to pay output tax on goods or non-current asset which is available at the time of deregistration. So that, that is very simple uh, question and like easy three marks if you know the concept. Moving on, let's discuss a few things more. When a business want to charge output tax or want to claim input tax, sometimes we have to, I mean, we are not able to claim every input tax back. Remember, if a seller is selling standard rated goods, input is available. If a seller is selling zero rated goods, input is available. If a seller is selling only exempt supply, then there is no input tax availability. But if a seller is selling partial uh, taxable supply and partial exempt supply, then uh, there are some restriction and some input tax you can get back. Otherwise, you will lose the other one. So which input tax cannot be claimed? Even if you are registered, you can claim input tax, but sometimes you're not able to. So this is the list you have to memorize that uh, input cannot be recovered on following items. Number one, the entertainment of business. You paid input VAT on entertainment expense. You're not able to get your input back until and unless there are two exceptions. Entertainment is related with staff and entertainment is related with overseas customers. The local customers entertainment is disallowed. But if entertainment is for staff and overseas customer, you can claim input tax. Number two, if you have acquired a car and unless car is 100% business use or purchase for immediate resale, you can claim input tax. But if a car has been purchased and that has been partially used for business purpose and partially used for private purpose, then no input tax is available on the acquisition of car. But if a car has been uh, taken on lease, then irrespective of the private use, you can claim 50% of the car. But if 100% is business use, then 100% input is available. As far as motor expense is concerned, if there are input tax on running cost, then 100% input tax is available even if there is some private use. Now, as far as output is concerned, we have to charge output tax uh, on the taxable supply, but sometimes there are some restriction as well on output tax. Moving forward. There is concept called bad dates. For example, a seller sell an item and charge output tax, but the customer is not able to pay your amount back. So it means that now you will want input back against this impairment loss. So there are conditions that that output tax is accounted for when an invoice is issued. If the debt becomes irrecoverable, the seller has paid VAT to HMRC and never recovers the 
same from the customer. So what seller can do? Seller can claim back if following conditions are satisfied. Number one, at least six months have been passed from the due date and the bad debts have been written off in the VAT account. And the claim for input tax must be made within four years and six months of the payment being due. This is how you can claim. But you have to wait six months at least in order to claim the input tax back. Now, sometimes uh, some uh, small businesses get some benefits in terms of some special accounting schemes. And these are useful as well. Might be uh, you can get some part question on schemes for uh, small and medium business as well. Now, remember one thing that uh, VAT is to be paid on quarterly basis. We have to pay VAT on quarterly basis. This is also possible that other than quarter can be acceptable, but mostly the VAT is to be paid on quarterly basis. And uh, you have to file return after 60 days of the quarter. And you have to pay after 60 days of the quarter, the same, the same thing, both return and both the payment and if return has not been filed or payment has not been made then there are consequences of interest and penalties now what if okay we were discussing the uh, We were discussing about the special accounting scheme. Let's discuss it first. Then I'll talk about further. So there are three special accounting schemes and this is available for a small businesses. One is called cash accounting scheme. Other is called annual accounting scheme and third one is called flat rate scheme. Try to understand. Normally we charge output tax and claim input tax on the basis of accrual system that is based on sales and purchases but sometimes it is a possibility that you can claim you can charge output or claim input on the basis of cash basis rather than on the basis of accrual how is it possible when it is possible these are the conditions first condition to be eligible for this scheme, the trader must be up to date with VAT return and must have committed no offense in the last 12 months. That is four quarters. And the taxable turnover including zero rated sales but excluding VAT and excluding sales of capital asset must not exceed 1.35 million per annum. This is the limit. So if the taxable total turnover is below that, it means a business can opt cash accounting scheme. But if the amount has been exceed 1.6 million or is expected to exceed this in the following 12 months, then you have to leave the scheme. Okay. And this scheme is not used for goods that are invoiced more than six months in advance of the payment date or where invoice is issued prior to the supply actually taking place. Now, these are the conditions. Now, what is the benefit of opting this scheme? Here, the benefit is that if your customer are not paying on time, then there is no need to pay VAT against them. So, if your customers are slow payers, or there are chances of bad dates, then it is better to opt this scheme. Similarly, there is a disadvantage. You might have some delay in the recoverability of input tax because you have to pay against your purchases. Otherwise, you will not be able to get your input tax back. Second scheme is called annual accounting scheme. Here, you have to file return once in a year rather than on quarterly basis. So what is the benefit? 
it is the benefit of uh, minimum administration is required so this scheme alleviates the burden of administration and helps the cash flows of the business condition are same the 1350 condition 1.6 million condition and the consequences are the conditions of annual scheme and the cash scheme are common so i am talking about the consequences only one return is submitted each year but payment must be made on monthly basis nine monthly payments on account are needed which will start from the month 4 till month 12 every month from 4 till 12 you have to pay 10% of the last year vat liability as a single installment and whatever are the balancing figure a balancing payment you have to pay within 2 months of the end of the annual accounting period that is 60 days all the payment must be made electronically and if the business wants business can pay quarterly payment as well third scheme which is called flat rate scheme so normally it happens that we charge output tax from the customer and get our input tax back but if you don't want this input or output set off then what you can do you can apply for a flat rate scheme also available for a small business but the condition is that the taxable turnover must be 150 or less very nominal in that the consequences are that the vat liability is calculated as a single percentage there is no input tax so a flat rate percentage will be given to you is applied on total vat inclusive turnover total means everything is included even if vat is also included taxable and non taxable every supplier is part of this so no input vat is recovered although a claim can be made to recover vat on purchase of capital asset that cost more than 2000 pound this is an exception otherwise input is not available the flat rate percentage varies from businesses to business and uh, that will be given you in the question if a trader has joined the flat rate scheme the trader may stay in the scheme until the total vat inclusive turnover exceed 230000 if that exceed 230000 then you have to quit this scheme you can check later on this summary from the study tax okay let's move to few more part questions from the kit c registration for vat the turnover of the business is expected to exceed the vat registration this is a question name question number 17 the turnover is expected to exceed the threshold in january 2023 the company would consider registration for vat earlier if it were financially advantageous desire will import some of the product from overseas but is unsure of the vat treatment as far as export is concerned so in uk the export is zero rated and on zero rated there is no vat but input can be claimed and as far as import is concerned if you are importing goods then what are the consequences you have to pay vat and in the same return you can claim input tax so in the case of import of goods or services there is no vat consequences because in input and output is almost the same until and unless you are not able to claim input tax back otherwise there will be no input no vat output now see the question explain in detail the advantages and disadvantages of registering voluntarily 
So we already discussed that what are the advantages and disadvantages and the VAT consequence of the import assuming she is VAT registered. So in case of import, there will be output tax and then input tax in the same quarter. So again, a seven mark question. Moving forward, there are two areas in VAT that are a bit complicated. One is the sale of capital assets, another is the uh, input tax claim against the exempted supply. That we will going to discuss. Uh, I mean, in the next session, not today. Uh, as I have some short time today. So let me discuss a uh, few brief element quickly. Let's talk about penalties. I already talked about this. All business must file VAT return online and pay the VAT electronically within one month and seven days. I told 60 days after the quarter, sorry, uh, it is 37 days, 60 days in the case of annual period. So kindly correct it that in case of annual return, the deadline is 60 days after the annual period. And in case of quarterly return, the deadline is 37 days after the relevant quarter and the payment is to be made in the same time. And uh, for few businesses, now it is mandatory that they have to submit VAT on a digital platform that is making tax digital MTD. Default surcharge. So if a business has not paid the VAT on time, Yes, we have covered majority of the VAT. Uh, two things that I mentioned, that is, uh, one is the uh, input tax against the exempt goods, and the second is the sale of disposal of capital goods, that is called capital goods scheme, that I will discuss in the next session. But today I will cover the, the easy part or the, the few parts which normally we examine in like four mark question, five mark question quickly. As I told you, VAT is not much heavy in the exam. It's like five marks or maximum seven marks. Now, if a business is either not filing return in the 37 days criteria or uh, not paying tax within 37 days. So we'll say a default has been incurred. So a default occurs when there are two situations. Return is not submitted on time, number one, or a payment is made late. There are two consequences. So what are the consequences of this? On the first default, there will be no penalties on the first default. Rather, HMRC serve a surcharge liability notice on the trader. So a notice will be given to you. Only a notice will be given to you. And that notice will tell you a 12 month period, which is called surcharge period. They will give you a 12 month period ahead that be careful in that 12 month period. If there is a subsequent default in the surcharge period, that is a 12 months period, then there are two consequences. One is the surcharge period is further extended to the 12 month 
on the default date or if the default involves late payment of vat there will be a surcharge penalty so if the default involves late filing of return there will be no penalty but if the default involves late payment of vat there will be a surcharge penalty okay and these are the surcharge penalties in the next 12 month if there is a first default in the surcharge period 2% of the outstanding vat if there is a second consequent then 5% if the third consequent then 10% if the fourth consequent then it is 15% now if you have calculated 2 or 5% value and if it is less than 400 in case of first and second so surcharge penalties at the rate of 2 and 5 are not issued for amount of less than 400 pound so if the amount is 400 pound then don't need to pay 2 or 5% and if in case of 10% or 15% a surcharge penalty is the higher of 30 pound or the actual amount of surcharge that you have calculated if there is a surcharge period then that surcharge period can be ended while submitting four return on times and pay vat liability on time otherwise that will be a continuous process and there will be always a surcharge period now quickly see this example you can understand it better the vat return for the quarter ended june was submitted late and vat due of 14500 was not paid until 16th august 2021 so this is the first default and there is no penalty on first default so what are the consequences a surcharge liability notice will be served and that will enhance your date from 30th June 2021 to 30th June 2022. See, this is the first consequence. Now, in this period, in the subsequent quarter, also submitted late, and the VAT due was not paid until 9th November 2021. So 30th September means after 37 days you have to submit VAT. That is 7th November. But VAT was not paid until 9th November, so it is the first default. So penalty is to be paid. So penalty is two percent. But as the amount is less than 400, so there will not be any. penalty but surcharge liability notification period extended to september 20 from september 21 means the period in which you default there will always a 12 month ahead period so you have to be careful next time similarly there is a small concept called error on vat return sometime it happens that you came to know subsequently that there was a error on a previous vat return so if trader realize that there is an error this may lead to a standard penalty for submission of an incorrect vat return but if the error is below the de minimis level and voluntarily disclose then there will be no interest at all only penalty but if HMRC has found the error then there will be penalty as well as interest now check this de minimis limit first of all you have to find out the amount of error then you have to calculate the de minimis limit which is higher of 10000 and 1% of turnover so for example your turnover is uh, 1% of turnover is like 8000 so de minimis limit is 10000 and now you have to compare your error with the de minimis limit if the error is less than de minimis limit then disclose this on the next vat return 
and if the error is more than de minimis it is significant then a separate notification will be sent to the hmrc and in that case if the error is more than de minimis limit you have to pay interest while in both cases you have to pay a standard penalty and what is the default interest if you are paying late vat then you have to hmrc will charge interest from the date of the outstanding vat and the date when the actual payment has been made again a simple rule of claiming the penalties and interest now overseas aspects imports exports so see quickly exports in case of goods the export of goods outside the uk is a zero rated supply for example if a seller is exporting goods to suppose uh, pakistan so there will be no vat charge on those goods because it is zero rated why zero rated because they are giving favor to the exporter as it allows them to recover input tax it also means the customer is not charged vat so the goods will be cheaper for the exporter now as far as import is concerned there is a postponed vat accounting system so in that case the purchaser account for output vat at the relevant rate and then reclaim this is as an input tax subject to the normal rule so what is the consequence there is no vat consequence this is at all now as far as supply is concerned so in case of supply of services we have to see whether it's b2b business to business or business to customer and we have to see the place of supply in case of b2b where the customer is established and in case of b2c where the supplier is established so a simple rule is that if there is a overseas business customer so the customer is uh, as it is b2b so where the customer is established the customer is is in overseas and this is the outside of uk vat but if you have overseas non business customer then you see place of supply is uk and output vat is charged on that similarly in case of import of services so place of supply is uk and there is a reverse charge procedure same as in case of import that first you charge output and then next you charge input and cancel that out so this is the 